that I need to be grateful. I need to teach myself to love who I am, uh, not only in my personality and not only in what I'm going to be, but who I am right now in my flesh because Christ in his flesh has chosen to give himself to me. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Stand Firm Project. Uh, I'm going to talk about a topic today that I've encountered a lot, uh, and even more so in, in recent years than uh, even when I started uh, the priesthood, um, and that's the topic of body image. Uh, it's a very sensitive topic, and the people who struggle with it, which are, are many, I would say maybe even most, uh, know that it's it's a very sensitive thing. It's a very hard thing. One, one hard thing about it is you're just kind of stuck uh, with the body that you have, uh, and sometimes that can be very difficult. Um, I would say uh, the the, and I hate to just kind of state the obvious, but uh, of of all the things that have happened recently, our image soaked culture has just foisted bodies uh, in front of us in, in uh, unbelievable volume. There's just so much content to see what other people look like. Uh, and uh, I would say foremost among this is the the social media platform Instagram. Uh, that there's you just scroll through and and you see what I'm not. Uh, the mirror was the invention of the mirror is bad enough, but now I have to see other people's bodies. The other one I like to point out is filters. Um, Instagram has filters, Snapchat has filters, a lot of places have filters. And when I send myself, I get used to the filter version of me. Get rid of my zits. Get rid of my double chin get rid of my uh, bags under my eyes, maybe even make myself sparkle. And uh, that can be kind of (laughs) nice as, you know, uh, sort of a diversion or sort of a a variety. But then I kind of get used to that. Like, I wish I kind of just looked like that. I wish I looked in this picture-perfect airbrushed sort of uh, way that I think that I ought to look. Why? Well, uh, one reason especially is because I see all these people that look like that, again, with filters, right? Uh, and, and even the ones who have, who possess what many would consider natural beauty that I look at them and I say, why can't I be like that? And we don't want to get into some sort of totally relativistic postmodern mindset where we say something robotic, like everyone is beautiful exactly the way they are. Everyone looks the same. You must subscribe to this. Otherwise you're judgmental. And then deep down, we kind of (laughs) know like it's hard to, it's hard to pin down and it's hard to identify, but we know there's such things as physical beauty. The ancients all understood this proportionality, blah, 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 blah. It is true in our faith that we are beautiful in God's eyes. And that includes our body. It's important to remember. It's not just me and my spirit self. We're as a human person, body and soul. And so God loves us in our bodies. We also believe that our bodies are decaying. And that doesn't take faith. That takes knowledge of myself. And I look at my body and it's not doing so well. Especially after the age of 25, it goes downhill pretty quickly, right? And then eventually it goes downhill all the way. And we bury it in the ground and eventually our uh, vacuum sealed uh, casket will decompose maybe in a thousand years. And the worms will finally get at that corpse that I left a thousand years prior. Our bodies are destined to decay. And yet, the funny thing is, St. Paul goes around preaching the, the story of the gospel. In the central moment of the gospel is Jesus' resurrection of what? His body. His resurrected body. And this is so fascinating. When we, when we read the story of St. Thomas in the gospel uh, of John, what does Jesus' body have? Well, first of all, what's kind of fun is Jesus eats fish. He makes a big point. Like, I'm hungry. Give me something to eat. Like, wow, he really was raised in the flesh. He's not a ghost. He's not an apparition like the apostles might have thought. He's a guy who eats fish, which makes him, what, human. And he's raised, though, with a glorified body. He can do some things that uh, he wasn't doing before, like come through walls or different things like that. But what does he have in his body? He has wounds. Those things that uh, were the the greatest mark of shame on one level, uh, the sign of his death, the sign of his mortality and his human nature, he kept them in his resurrected body. That Jesus right now, body and soul, in heaven, in his human nature, has wounds. He has holes in his hands, in his side, in his head, in his feet. Jesus preserved, when he could have done anything he wanted, 
those wounds, that vulnerability, the word vulnera means wounds in Latin, vulnerability, his ability to be wounded as man, he's preserved for all eternity to let us see him like Thomas and put our hands in his wounds to know that our Savior is our wounded Savior. And yet he's not defined by his wounds. His wounds are signs of love for us. When St. Paul was talking about this, he, he mentioned to the Greeks that, and there's a resurrection of the body. And everyone laughed him out of Athens and said, what? What's the thing that causes me most frustration in this life? The, what St. Francis termed brother ass, meaning donkey. But it's a good image of someone who's stubborn, of someone that we uh, get frustrated by. Why? Because it gets tired. I get tired in my body. I get hungry in my body. I have to go to the bathroom in my body. I get distracted in my body. My body is the source of all of this frustration to me. What's the last thing I want when my spirit self gets free and I'm free to be who I want? What do I get? Body. And now I'm back to being limited. I'm in one place at one time. I can't fly. Why do I want a body again? Because that's who we are. That's fundamentally who we are. And who are we? We're very good. In Genesis chapter 1, good, 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 good. And on the sixth day, God created man in his image and likeness, and he was very good. Like us, Jesus in his human nature has a body, and he is most good. Our bodies are us. We're not our spirit self occupying a, 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 a meat package outside of us. We're, we're us. We're body and soul. And so, uh, although it's destined for the grave, uh, we want to be grateful for our body. We want to love our body. We don't want to worship our body. We don't want to make our body the be-all, end-all. No amount of plastic surgery can save you. No amount of filters can uh, cause you to be satisfied with yourself. In fact, often both of those things cause even more frustration and end up, especially in some cases, costing a lot of money and making us look more artificial. And so... How should I deal with my body? Well, like any Christian uh, attitude, it starts with gratitude. I'm thankful for my body. Not like over the moon maybe with my body. Maybe <laughs> when I look in the mirror in the morning, I'm like, it's going to take a lot of work to make me presentable. Uh, but we thank God for our bodies. Our bodies are the things uh, that, that we've experienced all of creation with. Our eyes have seen our parents. Our ears have heard the gospel. Our feet have walked uh, beautiful roads or, or whatever the case might be. And they're all destined to be somehow in communion with God in heaven, although that's uh, mysterious. And you just got to stop comparing yourself to other people. Uh, we, we prioritize, even Catholics can do this sometimes, we prioritize those who are so physically attractive according to whatever fleeting standards that might mean as if this is going to like solve all of our evangelization problems if we just have pretty people talking about the gospel. Uh, we, 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 we love it so much, the superficiality of it all, and we hate it in ourselves. We hate where we uh, fall short. Uh, what do we want from someone? We want someone who loves us for who we are. Yes, physical attraction is important. Yes, physical beauty is important. Uh, there's some funny videos about like what crosses a guy off someone's list if they're attracted to him. It's like, mm, his teeth are crooked. You know, it's like, I like everything about him, but his teeth are crooked. Yeah, disqualified. You know, his, his jawline isn't perfect or whatever. When I was in high school, I didn't even think I knew I had a body. In the past 20 years, I've just noticed so much more of male body image problems, something that traditionally is attached to sort of a female-oriented uh, self-perception. Men are obsessed with lifting weights like never before to get those perfect Instagram, you know, muscles to, to look a certain way. Men are doing more to their hair than I ever remember in my life uh, to make sure it's just perfect, to get that perfect uh, style. Uh, of course, male body image has always been a concern. It's just part of human nature, fallen human nature. But for both uh, men and women... Uh, this image-saturated culture has, has created so much uh, destruction, so much self-hatred, so much self-loathing uh, that, that it's time to take a step back and say, I love my body. We don't have to be uh, false about it and say, like, there's no difference. Like, there is certain levels of physical beauty, even though it's very difficult to define. But uh, we have to learn to love that thing uh, which makes us us. And to find someone in life especially for those who pursue marriage, not to create a self 
for someone to love, but to find someone who loves us because they're going to wake up with you in the morning after you're married and they're going to have to look at you before you get all your work done. Yeah, first date, yeah, get all gussied up. 10 years into marriage, you're rolling out of bed, you're just who you are. And you need to find someone who loves you and appreciates you for that body. Uh, we, we, we can all grow, not only in the words that we say to each other, like, you are so beautiful, but also the things that we say behind other people's back. Eh, he's ugly. <laughs> what, what a loser. <laughs> we can actually, like, convert our minds to say, yeah, that person's beautiful, but, like, uh, that superficial beauty is going to be gone in a few years anyway. What are we really looking for, as St. Paul says? That clothing of virtue, that, that, that character that we love, that perseveres. So who someone is by how they act, that's going to last 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. What they look like, sorry, that's headed to the grave. Uh, and we do look forward to that uh, eternal wedding feast when we, body and soul, rejoice with the Lamb, rejoice with Christ, body and soul, when we see Mary, body, soul, uh, in heaven, uh, who already is there by virtue of her assumption. Uh, Christianity, Catholicism is a very carnal, fleshy religion. And uh, we don't want to get too fancy uh, in, in thinking about it, but just understanding that I need to be grateful. I need to teach myself to love who I am, uh, not only in my personality and not only in what I'm going to be, but who I am right now in my flesh, because Christ in his flesh has chosen to give himself to me. Thank you for watching the Stand Firm Project. Please like and subscribe and tell a friend uh, about these great videos.